Hi guys, this is Bailey the Maltese, and we're going to keep him in full coat, uh, get him washed and blow dried, and do proper trimming on him. So let's get busy. You ready, Bailey? Yeah? Okay, let's go. I am using a whitening shampoo on Bailey to help brighten up his color. And then I'll use a deep conditioning treatment that's designed for full long coats. So I've been seeing a lot of uh, questions coming in, especially on our group, Dog Grooming Tips and Tricks, on Facebook, talking about, and also in emails, about managing longer coats on dogs, regardless of the breed. And I see a lot of comments, and I also see comments from the people um, writing down the questions about keeping these coats properly brushed and combed and that they mat every day and that, you know, it's super, super difficult. A lot of it is in your technique. So we will be talking about that today. So one, one person who wrote in said that she put some sort of mask on her dog's hair and it's a leave-in. 
but the hair is breaking, the skin is dry, and the uh, condition of the coat is very, very difficult. problem with getting your information from groups like that is that you get way too many opinions and you don't know who's a professional, who's not, who's had success, who hasn't. And then, you know, there's individual factors, you know, with each dog and each coat type as well. So there's some general principles that go across the board and there are techniques that are widely used um, that are incorrect. So today I'll share with you my secrets and you know while I usually don't talk about it too much you know my experience is in coat keeping and I have handled the coats of over 300 champion dogs in all coat types and all breed groups, whether it be, you know, double coats, hand stripped, carded coats, uh, drop coats, poodles, you name it. So I've had success in keeping coats. The largest majority of Bailey's um, blow dry will be done with a pin brush. And while he's good and wet, that's when I do the nails. I'll put the warm air blowing on him to start drying him out while I'm doing the nails. I do the nails when they're really wet so that the long hair has less of a chance of getting caught in the nail grinding tool and I can see the nails easier when the dog is wet, when they have this much hair. I do not use a high velocity dryer on a long coat, or at least I rarely do. So as I blow dry Bailey, let's talk about coat care. Regardless of the coat type that you have, whether it's a silky coat, a cottony coat, a spaniel coat, a poodle coat, curly coats, uh, they have pretty much a common theme within them. Unless you're leaving the dog's hair curly after the bath, they all have the same basic principles. So number one, the tools that you use. Um, you wanna use the proper brush and comb for the coat type. 
I typically go through that um, in each of my breed specific videos on the proper tools for that coat type. So, and I also have a video on how to choose the right brushes for your dog. And in that video, I cover, you know, if it's a cottony coat, the type of brush you want, or the silky coat, the type of brush you want. Um, so check out that video. I will link it at the end of this video so that it's easy to find. So the basic principles that are kind of universal with most coat types is cleanliness. When I personally brush a coat, I do not brush the coat dirty um, because that causes breakage and breakage causes frizzing and frizzing ends up causing more matting. So for me personally, I was trained at a very, very young age. The very first dog in show coat that I was allowed to brush, I was six years old. I was handed a pen brush and a can of pro Grum, which was a spray that we used to use to help moisten the coat in order to give it some slickness to brush it out. So, although I do brush my dogs between baths, I never brush them dirty. So I don't allow them to become dirty. And if they are dirty, I go ahead and give them a bath and then brush them. So how can you tell the difference? What is the difference? That depends a great deal on the dog's coat length. So for me, um, if a dog is in full coat, depending on how easy they are to maintain, I, I wash and blow dry the dog every five to seven days. Um, a dog like Bailey here, I would, he's got a pretty easy to keep coat. I would do him every seven days. If he were going through a change of coat, which usually happens somewhere between nine months and 12 months old, I would wash him every five days. And while we're speaking of change of coat, if you have a dog with long hair, they all go through a change of coat. And while you really in many breeds don't see a significant change in how the dog looks. The, the concept of the change of coat, the dog's hair mats every day, every day. And that's when most people tend to give up and think it's impossible to maintain this long hair. When in reality, it's usually an eight week period of time. Once that time passes, the coat settles down and it becomes much easier to care for again. So if you can maintain the coat through that period by understanding that it's going to mat one or two times a day, and as long as you're on it every single day, you're gonna get through that time period. I will brush over the dog's coat, checking for matting, uh, brushing the problem areas really, really good. Running a comb through the problem area is really good. But I don't do as much combing if the dog is not freshly washed. Mostly, I run a brush over the dog and, you know, kind of do what I call a maintenance brushing. It is a light brushing over the coat, a feeling over the coat, um, making sure that it's being held over till bath day. For me, my deep comb through is on bath day. When I blow dry the dog, I use the proper brush for the coat type. And then when I'm finished with the blow dry, I run a comb over the entire dog from nose to toes, making sure there's absolutely no snags in that dog's coat anywhere. When I do my brush outs, I use a moistening spray. I usually use an anti-static spray, a really high quality uh, spray such as iGroom Magic Mist or Artero Mix. Both of those are really good. Uh, 
Chris Christensen Ice on Ice. There's a bunch of brands and everybody's got their favorite. So I use a really nice quality brush out spray. When these questions come in on our Facebook group, I see so many different answers as to what is the right thing to do. I see a lot of recommendations that I would not do if I were maintaining a show coat. And the reason why I bring up show coat is when you're handling a show coat, it's precious. You protect it with your life. One broken hair, one snipped out hair, one shaved belly, you know, and you, you're devastated, right? So shaving out under the arms, you're devastated. Handling a show coat teaches you how to maintain coat. You don't want frizzing. You don't want breakage. No thinning shears. How do you achieve that? You achieve it by never letting the dog get matted. The idea is not to brush out mats. The idea is to prevent mats. That is the pet owner's responsibility, 1,000%. That is not the groomer's responsibility. We don't save your dog's coat. You protect your dog's coat. So how do you do that? You stay ahead of it. You learn what your dog needs and you stay ahead of it. So again, a lot of the recommendations that I see come in through uh, answers to questions in Facebook groups is using things like cowboy magic or in show even in show dog circles a lot of coats are maintained with oil um my own personal experience with heavy silicone products and oil uh even coconut oil is when you're slathering this stuff on your dog or you're putting it on your dog heavily um it can dry out the skin itself. It kind of causes the skin to flake and slough off. Uh, I've never used oil on any of the show coats that I have maintained because I've seen that it causes the skin to become flaky with repeated use. If you keep it off the skin and use it for the ends of the hair, you know, that's one thing, but I've never found it necessary to use oil. Ever. Uh, heavy silicones like using the stuff or you know cowboy magic and those sorts of things that if you're doing a pre-bath brush out and you need to get something out of the coat before the bath that's when you would use it I would not use it for blow dries I would not use it for you know, in between bath brush outs because I don't like using heavy silicones or any heavy conditioning product on the coat in between baths. Number one, you're going to have dirt and debris attracted to your dog's coat, which is actually going to cause it to mat and cause it to become more difficult. A nice, clean coat if it's a drop coat like Bailey here, setting the part with a nice leave-on conditioner after the bath is good. And speaking of leave-on conditioners, I like rinse-out conditioners as much as possible. Number one, it gives you a double rinse on your dog. And number two, it leaves the coat very, very clean. A clean coat is not going to attract dirt it's not going to attract debris, and it's going to mat far less. So the one question I had about somebody bringing, using their, the one question I had about somebody using a mask on their dog's coat and said their dog's coat is matting terribly, they don't understand, they buy everything, they do everything, they use everything, and, you know, their dog's coat still mats. So... You know, in that situation, my first question is, does your dog have allergies? Is your dog chewing at its skin? Are you thorough each time you groom your dog? Are you combing all the way through to the skin? 
are you, you know, rinsing your dog thoroughly, right? And the mask, yeah, that's something I would never, ever, ever, ever do. So I want a clean, 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 fully rinsed coat, period. And so, um, you know, the right tools, super clean coat, and a regimen of maintaining your dog's coat so that it never becomes matted. And I can't tell you how many people I have seen with matted dogs say, I brush my dog every day. And you try to explain to them the protocol and you try to explain to them the routine and they shut you down as a groomer talking to a pet parent. No, I brush my dog every day. No, I can get a comb through it. No, where are their mats? I don't feel any mats. That is something that is so, so, so difficult for us as a pet groomer to deal with. A properly maintained coat is not matted. If we say it's matted, it's matted. And you need to figure out how to prevent that if you want hair on your dog. And that's what I'm here to help you with. And so, again, super clean coat light conditioning sprays, combing your dog from nose to toes the same day as the bath. If you run into a tangle as you're combing their dog, you back the comb out of that tangle, you use your brush, pick, 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 you take your comb back in, slide the comb through the hair, and you continue around the dog. If you hit another snag, back the comb out of that snag, don't drag it through, Pick, pick, pick with the brush. Check it with the comb. The comb is a checking tool. The comb is not a dematting tool. So, another thing that I see recommended a lot uh, from mainly groomers to pet parents is using vinegar rinses. My daughter had hair she could sit on. Long, thick, silky hair. And she had hair she could sit on forever. And so part of our mom-daughter routine was doing a honey and olive oil uh, soak on her hair and then doing a vinegar rinse. That is not recommended frequently to do things like that. Occasionally, because the vinegar kind of strips off the hair and while it leaves it very light and shiny and beautiful, doing it too often is detrimental. Doing it on occasion, rare occasion, it's like a clarifying thing. And speaking of clarifying, using a clarifying shampoo occasionally is going to be good to lift the products that have built up on your dog's hair over time. So for me, I like to do a clarifying every three months or so on my dogs. And that would be, if I were ever going to use a vinegar rinse, that would be when I would do it. Like as a clarifying every three months or so. Using a vinegar spray on your dog for a quick dry solution, I strongly disagree with. I've seen vinegar lift off paint. I've seen vinegar lift off lime scale. Can you imagine what it does to the dog's hair? I mean, seriously, think about it. You're, it's too stripping. It's, I think it's too harsh. That's a personal opinion. You can put your comments below as to, you know, your thoughts on that. I also don't use quick dry sprays. I handle the fluffiest, longest coated dogs Never have I found it necessary to use a quick dry spray. A clean coat dries quickly. I would worry the quick dry sprays would have the same effect of, you know, I would worry about silicones. I would worry about, and I could be wrong about this. You, you that are um, well educated in the science of it, leave your comments below. My personal feeling is, and this is based solely on feeling, is that 
anything extra in the coat can attract dirt, can cause breakage. Clean, well-conditioned coats. Also, while we're talking about that, using the proper shampoo and conditioner for your dog's coat type. So for double coats, I like the de-shedding type of shampoos that are super high quality. Um, for the drop coats, I like a shampoo and conditioner designed for a drop coat. For ter terrier coats, I don't like any conditioner, but I do like something like Chris Christensen After Bath. Uh, that really does a great job uh, for maintaining that coat type. Um, the right products from really high quality vendors who pride themselves in creating products for specific coat types like Igram, like Chris Christensen, um, not the perfumey stuff, but the good quality, well studied with a lot of scientific backing for the coat types is what I look for. So anyway, I hope these tips help. Um, again, the, this is kind of an overview. Each coat type has different protocols and each coat length has different protocols. So that's why I have hundreds of videos out there. You know, I have Shih Tzu's in full coat, Cotons in full coat, uh, Yorkies in full coat, Pomeranians in full coat, so you have a lot of breed specific information out there. And one of the questions that came in through our group was on a Yorkie with a cottony coat. One groomer replied, just shave it down. Cottony coat is improper for a Yorkie. I'm like, excuse me? I don't think so. So, you know, if you can have a coton in full coat, very cottony. If you can have a Havanese in full coat, uh, in comparison with the silky coated Yorkie, I would consider that more cottony. Uh, I've had many, many, many people keep cottony coats in full coat easily. And that is by exactly what I've explained here. So don't be discouraged. There's a lot of different coat types. They can all be maintained long if you're dedicated. I'm going to use a 30 blade on the pads of his feet. Brushing away the excess hair so it doesn't get caught up in his long coat. So notice I'm not clippering him around the eyes and I am not clippering him under the tail and I'm not clippering the belly. So as I go to scissor the feet, I'm scissoring off the front part of the foot, mostly. I am going all the way around the foot, but the front part of the foot is being trimmed in tight and the rest of the foot is being kept big. So on my files, some dogs all have AKC P, if it's a purebred dog. That means AKC profile. And what that means is it's a breed profile trim. It's a, if it's Maltese, 
it's going to have long hair, but sometimes people want the belly trimmed or you can shave more out under the tail or shave around the eyes or give it bangs, you know, and then I have others that say AKC. So AKC P is breed profile. AKC is breed standard. So the difference in that would be that we say on a Maltese, we're not gonna trim anything around the eyes. We're not gonna trim the belly and we're not gonna shave under the tail. Because if it were a show dog and you did any of those things, you would um, ruin the show coat. So Bailey here is not a show dog. He's a pet, but his pet parent prides herself on keeping him in correct coat. And this haircut is an AKC. And I'm adding these details for our team members so that in our um, videos, I can include what you would expect to see on the ch dog's chart. So Bailey here will always be an AKC. Or a drop coat. So when we do under the tail on an AKC, I don't take clippers under there because it hollows out too much hair. Unless the pet parent asks for it, of course. It's brushed. You don't want to scissor too close so that you're putting the dog at risk in case they pooch themselves out there, which they do when you're doing this sometimes. Okay. I use scissors and clean it up. Again, each pet parent's different, and if they ask for more and they want it hollowed out, great. But if somebody comes in and they say, I want him trimmed like a Maltese, I'll ask the questions. You know, do you want the belly trimmed? Do you want around the eyes trimmed? Do you want bangs? Do you want to keep it long? I explained to them what a Maltese trim is, which is this, and then there are deviations away from this. Get your hair out, you man. So let's go ahead and do his top knot before we do anything else. Good boy. Give him two bows. Using an anti-static spray, going to mist all over him. Okay. You can use a rat tail comb or a knitting needle to set your lines, whatever you're comfortable with. back. I'm going to separate it right down the middle into a part. And then from the corner of the eye to that part. Stay. I'm going to bring up this first section of hair. 
This isn't a correct show type Maltese top knot. This is just an everyday haircut in the grooming salon top knot. It's more of a maintenance top knot. Wrap my band around three times. Take my comb, make sure no skin was caught up in that band. So I don't try to get a dog to hold completely still when I'm doing this. If you notice, I kind of follow them around with a very loose, light touch. If you have hair sticking up on the nose, you can use a variety of different products for this. There's a product made by Vellus called Satin Cream. This one is Show Premium Pet Grooming Products, Picture Perfect. You can also use Chris Christian's and Thick and Thicker Gel. And that will lay that hair on the bridge of the nose and at the corner of the eye down. It's easier to do these top knots with the dog laying down by far. Wrap the bow band around three times. Now I'm going to take another section of hair using my knitting needle going back towards the ear. Right in front of the ear I'm going to make another line. Whenever you do this make sure, sorry buddy, whenever you do this make sure the hairs comb straight as you go to put in the band. Wrap it around three times. This one's up higher, so I'm not worried about skin being caught up in that at all because I can easily see with my eyes it's way up off the skin. Still a good idea to check it with the comb when you're finished, even if you're confident. Take your comb, slide it beneath all the bands. Make sure the comb shows through on the other side. That's going to tell you with certainty that no skin is caught up in there. Good boy. So now I'm going to set his part to do that. I'm going to mist over the entire dog. Brush the hair straight back. And 
And the bows are just for fun. They're not too meant to stay in the hair. The bows are simply for quick pictures for Instagram or Facebook. And then you can take them right out. So now I'm combing the hair straight back. And then as I go to set the part, I hold the head and I start with the corner of the comb using my wide tooth comb for this and do about four inches at a time. Keeping control of the head to keep the dog from shaking as you get it started. Shaking it out, I mean, not shaking like he's scared. And then keep coming towards the back. Always having your opposite hand on the dog, so if they start to shake it out, you can quickly hold them in place. Save yourself some time of resetting the whole thing. Next, taking my spray. I'm gonna go rather close to that part and mist it all the way down and then pull it apart like this to get it all in place. And run my comb through them one last time. Looking at the feet, making sure that they don't look too bad. <laughs> Check under his tail. Just make sure that looks good. I trim about one inch up into the back of the tail. And the reasons for that is when the dog is carrying his tail over his back, it's going to help the tail to appear set on high. And there's not going to have a bunch of hair falling off the back end of the dog. Now you might say you did not trim the belly, so what about that? As you can see here, because he has a wick on his sheath, the only yellow is on the wick. Everything else is nice and clean. That's how you keep a male dog in drop coat clean, is by leaving that wick, leaving the full belly coat. Also, if you shave the belly or you hollow out the underside of the dog, you lose your side coat. You end up with a hole. It, it's The hole's not right here, but you can see through it. It's too thin, and you don't have this nice full coat. So right in here, you're going to have a thin, thin, thin veil of hair if you shave the tummy or the underside. Also, when he gets his eyes trimmed, he tears more. And when he has full coat on his face, he doesn't. So, you know, that's something to think about too. I've seen that on a few dogs. If they're drop coats, they tear less in full coat. All right, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads. And thank you very much to my members. I really appreciate you guys. You helped me to bring this content to you on a regular basis. So thank you very, very much. Gonna give a shout out to our members here and I will see you next time. Bye. Say bye, Bill.